And so I've just showed you exactly why online calorie calculators don't actually work in the real world. What are they? They're guesses at best. Coach Greg, in today's video, I'm going to be explaining why calorie calculators for weight loss are bullshit. And or, if you like Jeff Cavalier, I'm going to explain why calorie calculators for weight loss are killing your gains, quite literally, and or losses. And so your goal is to lose weight, and you've been told to go online to use one of those calorie calculators. It's going to estimate how many calories you need, and then you can subtract 500 calories from that, and you lose about one pound of fat a week. I'm going to explain exactly how it's complete nonsense, bullshit, doesn't work, not even close, that they just guess at it, that I could literally look at you and give you a better number with my freaking laser eye surgery than the online calculators can actually do this. And how online calorie calculators, for the most part, are useless, waste of time, and screwing up everyone's fitness goals. And so by the end of the video, you're going to understand exactly how they do it, why it's wrong, and you'll be able to explain it to other people. And so please, stay tuned for this video. It's going to be way easier than you think. So please, watch the freaking video. Okay, everyone, class is in session. It's Calorie Calculator 101. And so I'm going to use myself as an example. How many calories do I need to maintain my weight? Okay, let's try and see what happens. So you put in a Google search. Calorie Need Calculator. Okay, Calorie Need Calculator. Oh, I like this one. Forbes. Calorie Calculator for Weight Loss and Maintenance. Forbes Health Science Back Calorie Calculator determines how many calories you need each day for both weight loss and maintenance. All right. Well, I like my weight. I'm pretty shredded single digits. And so I'm going to try to maintain my weight. Let's find out how many calories I need. Right. And so we type it all out. It's got all kinds of great explanations. And calorie calculator. Okay, we're all set. And notice it doesn't just say to enter your name. It asks you a bunch of stats. And the first stat it asks is, are you a male or are you a female? And so why do you think that is? Male or female? Do you think they're trying to find out your pronouns? Of course not. So the reason they're doing this is because it's assumed, that's right, assumed that men have more muscle than women. And remember, muscle burns calories. And so because you put in the answer male, it's automatically assuming that you burn off more calories than that of your female counterparts. But remember, some males have more muscle than others. Some males are ectomorphs, some are mesomorphs, you might be an endomorph, and so on. And if you look at me right now visually, you can see I have a lot of muscle, and so you probably could predict that I have a very fast metabolism, and you would be right. But let's see if Forbes calculator can figure this out. Next up, your age. Now, why do you think they're asking me for my age? Do you think they're asking me to find out if I have a senior's discount or if I have to have a minimum age requirement? Remember, there's nothing dirty going on here. And so why does it matter how old I am? And I see you excitedly thinking, oh, I know the answer. It's because as you get older, your metabolism goes down. And so if you write a higher number, for example, 47 compared to 27, then you burn off fewer calories because you, you're old. The truth of the matter is metabolism does not decline when you age. What happens is if you happen to lose muscle, then your metabolism goes down. Think of it. If you're 47 and you've lost 20 pounds of muscle because you're inactive and you don't do anything, then your metabolism can be a lot slower. But if you're 47 and you've been in training your entire life and you have a lot of muscle, your metabolism might in fact go up. And so when I enter 47, it's automatically thinking, oh, we got a male and he's 47. He's pretty old. So his metabolism a little bit lower than I would have thought if he would have put 27. But do you think that's actually the case? In the real world, the truth is your metabolism doesn't go down when you age, at least not from, for example, 20 to age 60. And so why does it need to know my age? It does not. Next up, it's asking my weight. Why do you think that is? Well, the heavier you are, the more calories you're going to burn. The lighter you are, the fewer calories. The greater your ratio you have of muscle to fat, the faster your metabolism is going to be. For every pound of fat that you have on your body, your metabolism is only going up by 2 kilocalories. In comparison, muscle, it's going to go up by 6 calories. And that is an estimate based on one study, but the amount of calories your fat and muscle burns at rest is in fact different depending from person to person. And so even with those estimates, 2 calories per pound of fat, 6 calories per pound of muscle, it's still an estimate. Some people's muscles burn more calories than others. Some people simply have a faster metabolism than you would guess. We all know these people. Some people can eat anything they want to have a six pack. Other people, they look at a cheeseburger and they seem to 
speaking weight. Some people's metabolisms are simply faster than others. And so you can't go on a chart on a computer, a calculator, and say, oh, Chad GPT, calculate my calories. I'm this height, this weight. I'm a male, identify female. I'm this tall, I'm this short, and I have this much activity. It's a guess. And so if you're using those Apple watches, my fitness watches, your heart rate tracker, all the trackers in the world, and you're saying, well, I'm going to use that. I'm going to burn calories based on how much I'm being tracked. The tracking is wrong. It's a guess. Your heart rate does not determine how many calories you're burning. It's an estimate when your heart rate goes up, you're moving more and you're burning more calories. But it is, in fact, a guess. Sometimes your heart rate is higher than others. Hotter environment, stress. You never slept as well. You're overtrained. Other times, your heart rate just won't go as high. Doesn't mean you're not necessarily putting as much power, that you're not burning as many calories. It's simply an estimate, a guess. And so if you're relying on all these tracking methods to tell you exactly what to do, and you're not getting the results you expected, it's because they were guessing. They were wrong. And so I write in my weight, 188 pounds. Now remember, it asked me if I was male or female. If I had to put I'm a female at 188 pounds, it would have automatically lowered my number. It would have assumed that I'm going to burn fewer calories. But what if I'm a very fat 47 year old man with no muscle? In comparison, what if I'm a very muscular female who's 188 pounds? It's gonna get it wrong. It doesn't know, it's guessing. Next up, it asked me my height. Why on earth would they possibly need my height? Am I on a dating app? Are they trying to see if I'm a short manlet and that all the girls should stay away? And so I enter five foot six. What do you think this program is thinking right now? If AI actually exists, you know what I'd be thinking? This is a short, fat piece of shit. That is what it's thinking. It's thinking he's five foot six, 47 years of age, and 188 pounds. This is a fat piece of shit trying to find out how to lose weight. That's what it's thinking. And so imagine if I had written six foot six. It'd be, oh, what an athlete. Six foot six, dude probably plays basketball. But he's 47, so he's probably a retired basketball player. And so he must have a fast metabolism because he's tall. Oh, but this guy, he's short. He has a slow metabolism. And they're doing this based on statistical research that would suggest that people who are on average taller are more often ectomorphs and have faster metabolisms than those who are short. And they can do this because based on statistics on the law of averages, they'll be more often right than wrong. Based on the bell curve, more people are going to be towards the center and there's going to be fewer people on the extremes. Do I look like I'm normal? Do I talk normal? Do I act normal? Nothing about me is normal. And I'm an outlier. God knows how many standard deviations away from the mean I am. Probably three or more. Who knows? But no, it's not done there. It needs more information than that. You can't just put that in. It's going to now ask me, how active am I? And why does it ask that? Well, the more active you are, obviously, the more calories you're going to burn. And so you're thinking, wow, it's asking so many of these relevant questions. And so it's got to be active. And so we have a variety of choices. Sedentary, little exercise. You sit there and you work at your computer desk. Obviously not burning many calories. Lightly active, exercise one to three days a week. That's still not good. If you're only doing that, you are lazy and you need to freaking exercise more. Next up, moderately active, exercise three to five days a week. Not bad. Congratulations. If you can put moderate, then you're doing, I, you're pretty good. You're doing the minimum. Active, exercise six or seven days a week. Well, I'm active and I exercise about six days a week. So is that me? Very active. Hard exercise six to seven days a week. Well, I guess I fall into that category. I think I go pretty hard. And so based on this estimate from Ford's Health Clinic, I'm burning off 3,174 calories a week. But remember, that's based on what I say. I say I exercise very hard. What if I felt like I only exercise moderately hard? After all, if I'm going into the gym and I'm training with weights to failure, for example, 30 minutes every single day, I personally think that's hard exercise. I'm training to failure. I'm going very hard. In comparison, what if somebody goes for walks, goes for an hour, seven days a week, walking, to me, that is not very hard. It's in fact very easy. And so if somebody were walking an hour a day, seven days a week, they would probably have put that they're active. In comparison, somebody who's lifting weights, very, very hard, going to failure, squats and so on. They would probably put very active because they go hard. 
But the reality is the person who's walking for an hour is burning more calories than the person who's lifting weights to failure for only 30 minutes. But they would have had their calories swapped. And so depending on the person, you may in fact be burning more calories than others. And consider this, there's a big difference between any two people going very hard seven days a week. Think of it, if you ride your bike hard for 30 to 45 minutes a day, seven days a week, you would have to answer the same question if somebody who's in the Tour de France racing three to five hours a day, they would have the exact same answer. And so you can see, this is an estimate. And based on this estimate, it says I need 3,174 calories a day to maintain my weight. And I can tell you right now, if I don't eat at least 3,500 calories a day, I have no energy, I don't feel good, and I would lose weight. And so clearly, I need more calories than is estimated based on being very active every single day. Not to mention... What if I'm not active at all? What if I did no bike riding, but I was a carpenter? I was active all day long. Perhaps I was a mailman. Perhaps I'm a landscaper. I'm mowing lawns, cutting tree branches, and so on. It would say, oh yeah, I'm pretty sedentary. I don't do any hard activity on any day ever but my metabolism would in fact be higher. I'd be burning off more calories than the person who's going very hard, lifting weights in the gym seven days a week. Remember, this is just one calorie counter for weight loss. Let me just quickly try another and see, are they both gonna say 3,174 calories? And so let's try the Mayo Clinic. I've heard of the Mayo Clinic, very famous, very well known. And so let's see what they say on the Mayo Clinic. And so again, age 47, five foot six inches tall, I'm 188 pounds, and I'm a male. And so clearly I've answered the exact same questions as I did in the last one. And so I'm certain it's going to give me about the same answer, is it not? And so of course, select the statement that best describes your usual activity level. All right. Very active. Include large amounts of moderate or vigorous activity in your day. That defines me perfectly. I'm very active. Pretty much every single day I'm doing large amounts of physical activity. And so I'm clicking very active, calculate, and what is my needs? 2,450 calories. But the last site said 3,174 calories. And you perhaps are not very good in math, but let me do some math for you. That is 72,400 calories fewer from one online fitness calculator to another. 724 calories. And so in a week, that's 5,000 calories different. And so depending on which calorie calculator you use, one is estimating I need 5,000 calories more than another. 5,000! Now remember, if I'm eating in a 5,000 calorie deficit a week, I'm likely gonna lose close to one and a half pounds a week. That is a lot. And if I'm eating 5,000 calories a week too much, I'm likely gonna gain about one and a half pounds a week. Also a lot. And so you're out there a newbie, perhaps you're not a genius in math, you're not used to this, you're gonna go on the online calculator and whichever one you use, you're going to follow it. And so if you're like me, very active and you use the Mayo Clinic, you're most likely going to starve yourself on any diet that you follow. Based on the Mayo Clinic, it's saying that your metabolism is very slow. You don't need to eat much. And on the other extent, if you're using the Forbes calculator, you're probably, for the most part, going to eat too much. Remember, I'm very active, but I'm racing bikes harder than last time. I can burn about a thousand calories in an hour. If you're training very hard and lifting weights in the gym, probably burning 300 calories in an hour. And so depending on what type of hard activity you're doing, the online calorie calculator is going to be very, very far off. Remember, I'm 47 and 5 foot 6. What if I were 6 foot 6 and 27? It would have very different answers. And so I've just showed you exactly why online calorie calculators don't actually work in the real world. What are they? They're guesses at best. And so if you were to simply say, Coach Greg, here's a picture of me. This is what I do for a living. And this is the kind of activity that I do and I looked at you, I could give you a much closer estimate to the amount of calories that you actually need in the real world. But guess what? Even that is still an estimate. I remember I've been coaching people for decades. And what I do when I first start coaching a client is I guess at the number of calories that I believe they need based on all the data that I've collected. When I coach clients, I submit a questionnaire with several detailed questions over 30 to gather this information. And so what makes you think that you can simply type in your gender, your height and weight and how active you are and that they're going to accurately spit out how many calories you need. 3,174. Oh, it sounds good, but in reality, it is a guess. And so what is my actual suggestion on what you should actually do? Well, for the most part, guess what? Almost none of you can actually track how many calories you're actually eating. 
almost nobody, as in not even five out of 100, one in 20, not even one in 20 people watching this video right now, that is including all of you, can actually calculate how many calories you're eating. You could try my fitness pal. Oh, I can, blah, 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 blah. You can't do it. I ask people all the time, how many calories do you think you're eating? They spit out numbers and I know for fact they're not. I sit at supper and watch them eat and I'll say, how many calories do you think you had? They'll perhaps say 2,000. I'll be like, it was more like 600. Or they might say, oh, it was 700. It's more like 2,000. People are clueless. They do their best. They eyeball it. They judge it. They weigh it. They are wrong. And so what is actually the best way to try to lose weight? You weigh yourself every morning you can. You get up in the morning and you weigh yourself first thing in the morning. And then you track your median weight. That's the middle number after you cross out the highs and the lows. You're left with the middle number. It's kind of like the average, but it's not. It gets rid of the outliers. Extremes and data. And for example, if you're 188 pounds like me and you're trying to lose weight, the next week when you go and do this, you're going to try to see if a lot of those numbers are less than 188, but not a lot less. If you wake up and you're 185, that's three pounds down. That's a lot. That next day, because you're only 185, you should try to eat a little bit more than you did the previous day. And how much you eat exactly? It doesn't matter. It doesn't it's not matter. like you actually know. You don't know if you had 2,000, 2,200, 2,800. You could guess, but it's probably going to be wrong. And so if you lost three pounds, eat a little bit more. And so the next day you get up and you're 194. Oh my goodness. Well, you way overshot and eat a little bit less. And at the end of the week, the highs and the lows are going to be crossed out. and You're going to be left with that middle number. And hopefully it could be a little bit less than 188, perhaps 187 and a half, perhaps 187. But if it's anything more than 1% of your body weight in a week, then you're losing too quickly and you should eat a little bit more the next week. And so 1% of 188, it's 1.88 pounds, about two. And so if you're under 186, absolutely, you're losing too quickly. You're probably going to lose muscle and you should eat more calories than last time. And so this allows you to regulate what you're eating without having to track every single thing that puts in your mouth. Now, I'm not stating that you shouldn't try to track calories. It's a very good idea. Every time you go to eat something, I believe that you should try to find out what's in it. Don't you want to know what you're putting into your mouth? Whether it's food, alcohol, drugs, you name it. You want to know what you're putting in your mouth. Think of it. You have a headache. Does somebody just gives you a pill? Take this. Is that Tylenol? How many of those are there? 15 Tylenols? I don't want that. I want one. And so please measure things. Get used to it. Learn about the calories in the foods that you're eating. You're about to eat a cheesecake for dessert. Why not look on the package? How much cheesecake is that? Wow, there's 1,700 calories in that piece. Are you sure you want to eat 1,700 calories right now? Perhaps you don't. If you do, fine, no problem. I'm not fat shaming. I'm not saying you can't eat something just because it's high in calories, high in fat, high in sugar. But shouldn't you know what it is? When you go to buy a dress, sneaker, shoes, a car, do you not want to know the price of the item before you put it in your cart? Or do you want to be surprised at the end of the month? Oh my goodness, I spent $1,700 on a pair of shoes. I thought it was $170. I want to know what I'm putting into my mouth. I want to know how many calories it has. Fats, carbs, protein, you name it. And so using an online calorie calculator to estimate how many calories you need would be like somebody trying to guess your body fat percentage while you're wearing a snowsuit. Yeah, you can try. It might be a good guess. Maybe. But not always. And so if your goal is to lose weight, guess what? I'm offering a free diet and training program. It's close to 50 pages. It combines some of the information that's written in my life's work, my circle diet book, which explains how to lose weight and keep it off for the rest of your life, as well as recipes from my cookbook. Not only that, my newest cookbook, Cookbook 3.0, which is available in PDF and we have hard copies. You can also get those on my website. And if you're looking for the number one supplement to help you lose weight, and not just in the short term, but the long term, a supplement that can help you to burn more calories, have more energy, look no further than GO2 Max. The main ingredient, NMN, has been studied in double-blind, placebo-controlled human studies to actually make a significant difference in the real world, not in mice, in humans. Interested in this or any of my supplements, please click the link in the description. Don't forget to use code GREG. It's going to save you 10%. You get 10% off code GREG. 
click the link in the description, head over to my website right now. And so let me know, do you now understand online fitness calculators? Did this make sense? Are you educated? Please write in a comment to boost the algorithm. Could you like the video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel? That would be so helpful to me. Also, don't forget you can watch one of those two bloops and of course, the cookbooks, training books, coaching plans by me and my team, the Circle Diet Book and the Harder Than Last Time clothing line. So many clothes on the website. Head over right now. Don't forget code GREG is 10% off. And until next time, I am out.